Hey everyone, welcome to Bacto Chat, where we talk about the little things. I'm Jared. I'm Cassidy. And I'm Anjali. And today we'll be talking about time management. start, we wanted to talk about how our time management changed throughout high school, and then as we moved into college, how did our time management shift? And Cassidy, would you like to talk about your experiences first? Sure. All right. So when I was in high school, I found all of my classes to be super easy. So I didn't really study a whole lot. I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on the homeworks. Um, And that's that. I didn't really manage my time at all. The most time management I had to do was basically just, when am I going to play my instrument? And when am I going to school? (laughs) Uh, That's all I could think about at that point. But then I came to college. And of course, you know, I feel like I'm a broken record at this point. College really is very different than high school. (laughs) Uh, And I'm going to say that a million times over because I found it to be very true. But In college, when I came as a freshman, I pulled all-nighters, like, every Friday to write my English blog posts or whatever I had to write, and to do all this homework that I had to do on Fridays, and I would wait until the last minute. So, literally, I am not exaggerating when I'm saying that I pulled all-nighters almost every Friday night. Um, It doesn't help that I hung out with friends like Jared Pavlock all the Uh, time (laughs) so i've been called out (laughs) you're a bad influence jerry (laughs) no um we had a lot of fun but that was not me doing my work effectively and then it ended up in me being tired and often i don't want to say this but you know i sometimes i would skip my 8 a.m i was bad yeah sorry jared i didn't see you at math every day It's okay. I wasn't there sometimes, too. (laughs) You would fall asleep in math. It's so bad. But hopefully you can learn from our experience so that you don't fall asleep in math at 8 (laughs) a.m. But anyway, I didn't get really great at time management until the fall of my sophomore year when I had gotten through basically all of my freshman classes. And I had a working schedule. I'd really been through the ringer. Like, I'd established a social schedule. Um... I'd settled in, I had a roommate that I knew and I was really happy to be with. Um, My life just seemed to get very easy at that point from a I feel comfortable perspective. Like, I knew who I was going to be around, I knew what kind of work I was going to be doing, and I could start branching out into um, like labs and getting more opportunities under my belt. But time management was something I really struggled with, and that was something that I tried to nail down before I started piling things onto my schedule, which can be good and can be bad. But Mm -hmm. I will let um, Jared and Anjali talk about their experience and how they got better at time management throughout their academic careers. So Jared, would you like to go next? Oh, absolutely. Um, I also did not have a lot of time management in high school. I think like a lot of people that are probably listening right now, my time was kind of managed for me. Like I was on a set routine, like I would go to high school, I would have like extracurriculars like sports or other things like mock trial or something like that. And then I would do homework at night and then I would have dinner and go to sleep like every single day. It was kind of the same thing. And I mean, I chose to do my homework, but it was just kind of, you know, the time I did my homework. But then when I came to college, it felt like I had tons and tons of time at my disposal. It was honestly a freeing feeling that it was now my routine I was setting. Like, basically, besides my classes, I set to do what I wanted to do, like, when I wanted to do it. And it was great until my exam started up, and I realized that assignments take up a huge, huge chunk of your time, Mm -hmm. and you're responsible for them. It's really all on you now. So I had a planner that I bought from Barnes & Noble, (laughs) And I had it with me that entire freshman year, and I've used the planner ever since. It really, really helped me out, like, listing my assignments and what time blocks I wanted to do them. I prefer, like, an hourly planner, Mm -hmm. but that really helped me a lot. It also really helped me when I finally learned doing projects the night before or studying for an exam the night before or the day of was not the way to go when it comes to effective time (laughs) management. 
And really, like Cassidy was saying, I also hung out with friends a lot, including Cassidy. <laughs> and hanging out with friends is really important, actually, that you don't get too stressed. You should save time in your time management plan to spend time with friends. It just shouldn't be like all of the time if you really want to succeed. But that was my experience, my evolution. I still struggle with time management a lot. I think that out of all the topics we've talked about, this is one of those that is like super, super difficult for everyone Mm -hmm. at every stage in life. So, but yeah, Anjali, um, what was your experience with time management? Well, yeah, um, I can pretty much agree with both of you. I still have not cracked the code when it comes to time management. Um, In high school, sometimes I would study for my exams the day before the exams or even sometimes the morning of the exam. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I remember this one time for my biology class, I woke up at 4 a.m. to read all of the chapters in the textbook so that I would be prepared for my exam at 7 a.m. That was the worst thing ever. I do not recommend this at all. And (laughs) (laughs) that does not work in college. Absolutely not. Um, I remember I started using the calendar in my phone as a high school student to, um, to log in my... Uh, uh, music concert dates for high school so like whenever I had a, a, a concert at night I w- would have to put it in my phone calendar and I was like oh this is a great way to kind of plan my week and to put in my exams and projects and things like that so I started using that a lot and through through using my phone calendar I found a lot of different apps um, and other like like planners, like mobile planners, um, that I could keep on my phone or on my laptop since I spend so much time on both of those things, both of those things throughout the day. Um, and that is such a great reminder to, you know, do whatever you need to do, like laundry or homework or study for an exam or something. Um, and I've really utilized those sources. Um, I've, I tried to use planners and notebooks, Um, but what always happens at the start of the school year is I get one and I'm really excited (laughs) to use one, and then after a few weeks, I kind of forget about it, so (laughs) that doesn't work the best for me, but but having these resources like right in front of me um, on a screen helps me a lot more. I don't know why, but it just does. Um, and yeah, and now that in college, I've kind of used these things for a few years now. Um, and I've tried to log in bigger, like assignments, uh, projects, um, uh, speeches, exams, what, whatever larger assignment I may have. Um, and then I have a separate area in my, um, laptop where I keep daily assignments and like daily Uh, chores or or anything else that I may need to do throughout the day to kind of feel like I've accomplished something at the end of the day not just have like a bigger like goal in mind because usually cannot accomplish that goal by the end of the day so I love to kind of make a few goals for myself throughout the day and then feel accomplished by the end of the day so that I can you know cross it off my list um, which is very very satisfying um but yeah my I think my time management has evolved as I have signed up for more things it's it's still evolving I'm still not the best at it don't get me wrong but yeah hopefully those few tips may help you yeah I think you made some really great points in there both of you um I guess starting with Anjali you seem like the type of person that um is really better at scheduling your time via like spreadsheets and online (laughs) calendars and stuff like that I feel like just like through talking to you through these podcasts I'm starting to learn more that you're more of a digital person (laughs) and I'm very much the opposite (laughs) I'm so bad at doing things digitally and I've mentioned this before in other podcasts but to me something about typing something into my computer feels like final like as Mm -hmm. if it needs to be this way And when I write things down, just like pencil and paper, it just feels so much easier and like less final. I don't know, maybe 
I don't know what it is, but I just scribble on like anything I find. So the sticky notes, the mm. um, notebooks, the journals, the <laughs> the planners. Uh, I have like all of those things all over the place, which doesn't necessarily help for um, organization, but I have a few tips as to how I currently do things to stay organized, even when I have all of those different things um, scattered around and all of this random paper. You did mention, Anjali, that you've bought planners and then you've never used them, <laughs> which I completely relate to. I totally did that for years, oh, yes. years, years, years. That's what I did. But I think the reason that I completely forget about my journals and planners and stuff is because I didn't find a way I liked to do them. Yeah. So I feel like oftentimes people are like, keep a planner, period. (laughs) And then they tell you nothing else. And it's like, okay, I'll do that. And you have no idea what to write Mm -hmm. down. Like, of course, like, you know, you have really big things. But like, other than that, what do you write? Mm -hmm. So personally for me, I keep two books. Um, Maybe this will help somebody out there. Maybe this will provide some semblance of structure. (laughs) Um, But I keep a book that is just a regular notebook, and it's just anything and everything that I think. It's weekly goals. It's things for assignments that I want to remember, things for grants, timelines, checklists, just various notes. And it's just like to keep my brain sane because it's going a mile a minute during the day (laughs) and if I don't write it down I will totally forget it (laughs) so I just write anything and everything in there and then if I need it later I'll go back and I'll say oh I remember writing this down and you know where it is so um, that's the first book I have it's just everything Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then my second book is much more tame aesthetically pleasing the prettiest Marvel (laughs) white notebook looks so clean i only use one pen in it oh but um that's yeah (laughs) i'm i'm on that level now (laughs) but it keeps me sane because one of them is just absolute chaos and then the other one's like okay so this is my schedule i'm taking the weekly goals i'm taking the notes from my my crazy notebook and putting them in this um this pretty this succinct planner i have a checklist for everything that i want to do for each day um, so for my weekly goals, I'll write down like when they're due by and then in my planner, which has a calendar and um, daily entries, I'll put a checklist of what I want to do each day to stay on task for my weekly goals mm-hmm. or um, make sure that I get something done by a certain date. Because normally, you know, if you're t- if you're managing time correctly, you're not going to shove everything to the last <laughs> minute. So you're going to need those daily entries to say okay well I want to write an intro today so I'm going to put a checkbox for I am did I write my intro today and then when I do finish the intro I'll check it off if I don't finish my intro I'll continue it on to the next day create a little checkbox there let's say I finish it that day I can check mark that day's intro entry And then on the last one, I can fill in the box to see that, oh, yes, I did do my intro if you're looking back on the things that you did. So it doesn't seem like something's completely incomplete. Oh, nice. Um, But that's kind of how I do things. (laughs) I hope that made a little sense. Maybe I can put, like, a graphic on the screen so you guys can (laughs) see what I'm talking about. (laughs) Um, But then I have those things. And then the big thing that I have is if there's something super important, like an interview or um, I need to have this huge grant due by this day, I'll put them in my calendar just to be like, um, I'm looking at my phone, it's on my calendar there, Mm -hmm. I totally won't forget about it because I'm always seeing my phone, but the other things are just smaller things that make me feel like I'm doing something, (laughs) kind of like what you said, Anjali. Yeah, Mm -hmm. no, I love that, and I love how you have like a legend <laughs> um, to kind yeah. of just make sure that you're getting everything done and that you know what you've gotten done already so you're not, you know, <laughs> making yourself crazy throughout the week. But um, mm-hmm. no, that that's wonderful. I love it. Absolutely. Well, I guess what we can talk about next after like, you know, some nice time management skills that we've used or like Cassie said with her planners, we can talk about stability just in general, mm-hmm. a hot topic nowadays. Um, 
<laughs> stability, I guess, is what I would say is just like, you know, being stable as in like you have a schedule and everything is just going well for you, which is what a lot of people look like on the outside, but on the inside, it might not be the same way. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. <laughs> some tips to keep stability in your life. One of the biggest ones that we have here is eating meals. Even if you don't feel like you're hungry, mm-hmm. there's, been a, mm-hmm. there's been a ton of times in college where I've had just a really busy day and I'll like forget to eat lunch. And I, I quite literally will not think about it until dinner rolls around and I'm like, wow, why am I so grouchy slash hungry <laughs> slash angry? And um, it's because I forgot to eat. So it's really important. Like that's also something you can put in your time management planner or schedule or whatever you decide to do is meals because those are really important Mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised like how easy it is to forget yeah but yeah yeah absolutely and just like keeping that schedule every day now that we're in a pandemic and a lot of people's classes are online or you might not have to commute it really does kind of mess up your internal schedule both sleeping and eating and doing schoolwork like a student so it's really good to like keep a routine going every day Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one more thing about stability is even if you lose stability like say you've been keeping it really great for a couple weeks but you have one day that's super busy and everything just feels like it's falling apart I just want you to know that that's okay it quite literally happens to everybody And it's all right. We are adaptable and we'll make it. So it's okay if you're really stable for a long while and then one day you just have like a really bad day. That's all right. Yeah, one thing that, Jared, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but one thing that helped me as a freshman, actually, you know, it helps me every year at the beginning of the school year, um, walking my class route before the first day of classes is so helpful to know where you're going, to know where the next possible uh uh like cafeteria or or (laughs) or um restaurant or like something quick knowing where that is on your route is so helpful um so you know you don't want to skip those meals um but yeah I highly recommend walking your class route um for each for each day like since Monday Wednesday Friday here at Penn State we usually have all the same classes, and then Tuesday, Thursday, we have the same classes. So walking the class route for Monday and for Tuesday definitely be very helpful. Anjali, I think there's one thing that you mentioned earlier when you were talking about um, your experience with time management that was on the lines of getting involved in more things. And I know for a lot of people, when you come into college, it feels like you have so much time. Mm-hmm. But Jared, do you? We, you don't you literally do not <laughs> if there's any <laughs> if there's anything you can get out of this you actually do not have that much free time <laughs> you feel like you're on top of the world you're independent you're away from mom and dad you do whatever you want but then you end up like sitting on your phone and it's really not <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> but um getting involved in more things totally helps you manage time yeah. mm-hmm. um I got into the blue band my freshman year, and I think without the blue band, I would have literally had no semblance of, like, who am I going to hang out with? I need to be what, when, where, <laughs> what, where am I? Who am I? It's it's just, like, it helps keep you grounded, and it also helps you realize when you have time to do things. It feels less like, I have all the time in the world. I can just watch the entirety of this Netflix series. <laughs> And, and you actually recognize how much time you have. I find for myself, like, when I have a ton of time, like you said, like, I do stuff like watch YouTube or Netflix, and I don't get anything done. But when my schedule is full with, like, other things besides school, it kind of forces me to be productive when I have that free time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what I would say is, like, even though I'm over here yelling, like, you don't have as much free time as you think you do, which is sometimes true, don't be afraid to, like, join things just because you think you might not have enough time for it. Like, there's a balance to strike between not pushing yourself too hard by getting involved in things, Mm -hmm. but it's also good to have some extra things besides school to fill your time, and then that kind of focuses you when you do need to study to actually study because it's kind of like crunch time. That's just my experience Mm -hmm. with that. 
And you, you can use those other extracurriculars, like if you sign up for a lot of clubs, um, you can use those club meetings or those socials that you'll go to as a reward if you spend your fr uh, free mm -hmm. time like doing work. Um, and, and I do that a lot, especially now. Um, I use that a lot, especially now, because I keep signing up for things, even though that's not, you know, the best thing that I should be doing. But um, I use those meetings as a way to kind of pat myself on the back for, for like reading a chapter or something. But mm -hmm. that being said, do not sign up for every club <laughs> that you like <laughs> you really shouldn't do that but if you if you feel like you're on the fence about signing up for a club definitely go for it you will make the time if you really enjoy that uh, specific club just don't load up your schedule <laughs> that's very true when we say you don't have time what we mean is you do have time but you'll be surprised what you spend your time doing and exactly. then say oh no Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, yes, definitely schedule as effectively as you can. And don't try to overschedule and don't try to underschedule because we know what you'll be doing if you're underscheduling. And if you're overscheduled, you will feel like your life is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> if you do have extra time in the day, um, does anybody have... A comment on what they normally do or how they use time super effectively during the day so that they can have more social time later okay I when I'm like eating a meal I know a lot of people do this I'm not the only one but something that I enjoy doing to have like that time to myself is like watching YouTube <laughs> while mm -hmm. I eat or like watching anything while I eat alone, like I don't like to interact with anyone. Um, I just want to like focus on one thing and let like my brain kind of rest from like thinking about a million other things during the day. So I really enjoy that time where I can just focus on my food, focus on whatever I'm watching. Um, and yeah, that's very therapeutic in a way. Yeah, that I also watch things while I eat. It's very, very relaxing. <laughs> it, it's awesome, honestly. Um, I guess an effective use of time for me is I try to get some sort of phys physical activity in. That's a good relaxant. Mm -hmm. I really try to avoid using my phone. It's so hard. <laughs> it like, is I'll, hard. Get, <laughs> I'll get swept up so easily. It's It's awful. Mm -hmm. Especially but during the pandemic. I try, I try not to. Like, yeah, literally, yeah. especially during now, like it's gotten worse. So I, I try so hard not to. And I always get this thing. I get this like feeling in my head when I go to do work sometimes. I just get like, I don't know, nervous about starting it. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. if yes. you guys feel that too. Oh, And 100%. then I won't. I'll be like, I don't want to start this because like I've already waited too long. Like it makes no rational sense. Mm hmm. But I'll like sit there and I'll be like, I just don't want to, I'll just start it like in an hour, but for now I'm just going to be on my phone. So mm -hmm. I very much implore you not to do that. Please, please start the assignment. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> it really is so much easier to chunk an assignment up over multiple days than doing it all at once. Because if you were like me, you like procrastinate until the last second. It's just, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it helps so much. And also like redoing projects that you do, like essays for me, I have to like revise many times. Mm -hmm. And if I do it all at once, it will just come out to be a jumbled mess. But yeah, I mean, I bet you guys have a lot of similar experience. So you guys can talk a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, I, n I am notorious for like waiting until the very end of the day when I'm exhausted to start something, to start an assignment or start reading a textbook. Um, and then at that point in the day, I feel guilty about going to bed without starting that assignment. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to start the assignment. So I will be just very, very unproductive at the end of the day, 
even when I should either be sleeping or I should either be studying. And then it's such a terrible habit. I still do it to this day. Um, and honestly, as Jared said, just do it. Just get it over with. <laughs> um, again, like sleep is so, so important but also don't hold off your assignments till the very end because I can assure you if you if you like sacrifice maybe a half an hour of sleep every night to work a little bit on an assignment it'll save you an entire night's worth of staying up and finishing that assignment mm -hmm. later on so yeah, just <laughs> but do not, do not, uh, do not just hold it off. It's my two cents. <laughs> you guys are talking a lot about not being able to start things, which is completely relatable. Like, it has taken me years to figure out that y this sounds stupid, as stupid and simple as it sounds, you don't need to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like every essay that I've ever written, like before I figured this out, took me like forever to start because I was like, oh my god, I can't think of a good way to introduce this. Like, how am I gonna start? I need to establish this theme like immediately. I need to, blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if you don't really like writing intros first, you don't have to. <laughs> That's literally what scared me off and made me cr procrastinate for so long in the first place is I never knew how to start. Yeah. So the way that I start things now is if I'm writing a lab report, I write the methods because they're incredibly straightforward and there's not a whole lot of elaborating or discussion you need to do. You just need to say, I did this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a great way to, you know, get started. And as soon as you get started, then it's super easy. You just flow into the results and then the results into the discussion. And then you're saying, oh, what do I need to bring into this um, so that people can understand what I'm discussing? And that goes in your intro. And that's how I write lab reports yes. and stuff like that. Um, but even just I was working on a grant proposal which is not necessarily a lab report. It's more of a like personal statement and statement of grant purpose kind of deal where it's like, this is what I'm going to do. This is who I am. And I found that so difficult to start because I literally just kept feeling that same feeling of, oh my God, I need to set a theme immediately. But really, it doesn't have to be that way. If you make it that way, that's how it is. But I just started. I just said, I want to talk about teaching. So I just started talking about teaching and then you say, oh, well, that could fit in maybe this. And then you can start talking about something else. And it's really just getting started and then bouncing off of the things that you've already got that I think creates your first draft. And then you can go back and revise it like Jared said he likes to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that that's such a great point to make. Um, I love writing outlines and just, you know, planning what I'm going to do in a paper or in a project. Um, and that really helps me. If I don't feel like writing words or like writing complete sentences, I'll just make a bullet, uh, like a bulleted list um, and just kind of lay out my ideas. And that helps so much. That's such a great way to start. Just if you feel like you're avoiding starting something because of one like part of it, one specific task, try and do everything but that task and it'll mm -hmm. feel so much better after you've finished that and you're like, all right, that wasn't so bad. I'll just do the same thing again tomorrow. Another thing I guess that's worth bringing up mentioning is or asking other people to hold you accountable for deadlines, which is a little, I guess, unorthodox, but <laughs> um, even if you talk to your family and say, oh, I got, I have this paper coming up on a Friday. Um, you know, mom, can you just tell me, every, can you text me every night and say, oh, make sure you spend 45 minutes on your paper. I mean, that, that really does help. And I have, I have asked my family about it, uh, to kind of hold me accountable, um, to their dismay, I guess. <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> Uh, no, that, that really does work, so... Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, asking people to hold you accountable can be as simple as just telling someone that mm -hmm. you have something due. And 
you know, for me, that feels like if I say to my mom, oh, mom, yeah, I have this grand proposal due. She doesn't necessarily harp on me for it, but I will say, oh, my God, like, people know that I need to do this thing. <laughs> like, I better do it. Or, like, if I, I'm talking to Dr. Kovac or something and I say, I'm going to get this to you within the next week, then I'm like, well, I got to do it because <laughs> I told her that. <laughs> so it just it makes you feel like there's some sense of urgency to what you're doing and it really helps you set a deadline when maybe, for example, with undergraduate research or research in general, you have pretty open deadlines. Like there's no one telling you necessarily, do it by this day or else you get a zero. Like there's not a whole lot of incentive there other than I need to do this thing for me or for my professional development or X, Y, and Z. On that note, setting realistic goals and deadlines is super hard, um, but don't be intimidated by this and just sh shove everything to the last day because that's the opposite of what you want to do. Um, the more you set goals for yourself and sometimes you won't reach them, that'll show you, um, oh, I can't do this necessarily in three days. Like I can't write a perfect <laughs> essay, like a perfect 10 page essay I can't write in three days. That'll tell you for the next 10 page essay you need to write that you need to set more time for whatever you're doing. So just do it, and then the more you do it and the more you fail or the more you succeed, the better you're going to get at estimating how long something's going to take realistically. And then another part of time management is studying and how to study effectively. Uh, one of those things is if you feel pressured to study with friends, you don't have to study with your friends. Um, studying with your friends can be really, really fun, but it usually isn't very productive, at least in my experience. I've studied with people and we've said, like, we're going to go to the library at five o'clock. We're going to study what's on the exam tomorrow and we're going to, you know, we're going to work from five to six. We're not going to stop. And then it just turns into like gossiping and messing <laughs> around and we really don't talk about anything. And it was kind of just a waste of time. So if you're feeling like you're in that position where friends keep asking you to study, it's okay to just say that it's not really working out for you and you want to try a different way. What worked out for me, I also I like studying with people too, but I try to find people that I might be in class with but I'm not especially close with. Or sometimes you do find friends that are willing to be productive and you work really well with. So that's what I did is I just found the right people that I studied with. And you'll know if it was like a productive study session or not. Like if you leave feeling better about your exam, it was a good study session. But it can be tough to tell your friends that you don't want to study with them. But you could always just say like, I just want to do other things with you guys, not study. Because it's not really working out for me. Also for studying, an another point is um, studying longer isn't necessarily better. I don't know if we've mm -hmm. talked about this in another, in another podcast yet. But um. When I first came to college, I thought that studying for a long time was like a mark of success. Like if I, if I spent like three hours studying for my chem exam, by gosh, I'm going to get an A on that chem exam because I put three hours into it. But that is not the case. I mean, maybe it is for some people, but I now I found that I do better if I'm like actively learning and I can only really do that. I prefer to do it for an hour at a time with breaks in between. Because I just get really exhausted if I'm sitting there for over an hour trying to learn things in any subject. Mm -hmm. But it helps taking breaks and it helps doing the studying strategies that help you succeed. Not necessarily just trying one st strategy for like three hours at a time. Or even worse, I've heard like upwards of like seven hours. Or like I pull an all-nighter in the library, which sometimes does happen. I mean, if you're crunched for time, sometimes you will have to cram which is unfortunate, but it's always better to do it in a structured manner over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a great opportunity for me to plug that we do have a podcast on this uh, and how to study effectively and how you can transform your studying to bring it to another level uh, like we had to do when we came to college. So feel free to watch our podcast about that, and that'll be in the description. Yes, nice podcast. <laughs> I guess if we want to start wrapping this up, um, the last thing that I really want to put out there is if you are feeling overwhelmed, I feel like we say this every podcast, but there are people out there that want to help you. 
you're at college to learn and people are there to help you learn. Um, if you're tired, if you're just mentally like everything feels like chaos and you just can't focus, just talk to friends, your employer, your professors. You can even reach out to um, mental health uh, services. And all of these people are willing to help you. If you say, if you come to them and you say, I really can't get down this time management. Can you help me? Like they have been doing this for a while if they're your professor. They definitely have some strategies that have helped them in college. And I'm sure that they would be happy to import this information Mm -hmm. and this knowledge to you. So of course, talk to people. Don't just sit in silence and suffer. That's not what we want you to do here. Any other last thoughts, everybody? No, I don't think so. Just stay safe in this crazy world. (laughs) Good luck with managing your time. Well, thank you guys for listening. Follow us on Twitter at Kovac Lab and check out our other videos on our YouTube channel, The Kovac Lab. See you next time on Bacto Chat.